Probably most of you guys that use Blender have heard of the KitOps add-on. You may also have used other add-ons by the developer Chip Walters, who also worked on KitOps. And the good thing, he also has other interesting add-ons that you might find useful. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over his best add-ons that cover different parts of the 3D workflow. But before we continue, I want to remind you guys that we are going through the Black Friday to Cyber Monday sale. So this is a great opportunity to get yourself some of the best add-ons, courses, shaders, you name it. Especially on the Blender market, because they are having a big discount of up to 30%. And other developers, even more than that. And if you don't know where to start, I have in the description of this video a list of the top Blender add-ons and courses that you will ever need. Without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Of course, we're gonna start with the newest updates of KitOps, KitOps 3. Especially with this new update, I believe that KitOps became the leading kit bashing add-on for Blender. It offers a huge library of assets as you can see, in addition to materials and boolean operations to use on your models, and with the recent release of KitOps 3, the add-on got a real boost in performance. And if you're like me, and you like to create sci-fi models and scenes, I think this add-on will be one of your favorite tools, and I recommend at least to use the free version, because although it is free, it still offers a lot of good features. You might also want to take a look at KitOps Parallax, which is designed to help you create some detailed 3D scenes inside a plane. Well, not really. You can use it to make simple planes look like they have a room inside them which can move with the camera giving an illusion of depth. If you want to add details to your scene, I think you should really get into this add-on and give it a shot. Especially if you have a weak machine that can handle big scenes full of objects and buildings or if you want to work on big projects. By the way, the parallax effect is a lifesaver especially if you work on a lot of ArcVis projects. And more precisely, if you have lots of buildings with close-up shots and you want to showcase what's inside the stores, the buildings, the apartments, and so on. And the parallax effect is going to help you provide that with a fraction of the performance required. And the thing that I really like about the add-on is how customizable it is. You are not limited only to simple rooms or cubes inside a wall. You can actually experiment with the add-on and add some back rooms, stairs, and other details that you might want to include before rendering and use it as a plane. The next add-on I want to talk about from Chipolters is quite a simple one and a small one, but it can be really useful in your workflow, especially if you have lots of add-ons. Also, I'm not sure why a lot of people are not talking about this add-on because it is really useful. So, the add-on does a simple thing, and that is allowing you to change and organize the end panel or the sidebar or whatever you want to call it in a really simple way. You can reorder the end panel tabs, rename them, and consolidate them so you can put multiple add-ons into one tab. You can also grab this add-on for free on the Blender market, which is a great deal. Slice It Bend It is another good add-on if you want to subdivide your models in an optimal and controlled way. It can slice objects in three directions with a fixed count and it can maintain square division. You can use the add-on to slice the full object or just a selected phase in the edit mode. It basically does what a subd modifier does but with more control and maintaining a better square division. You can slice in any direction, whether it be X, Y or Z, or you can do all of that at the same time. And I like the fact that the slicing does not affect the overall shape of the object, which is optimal if you like to make and use displacement maps. Bendit is actually the second feature added to the add-on, as it was only called Slice It before, I mean when it came out. And the Bendit feature, or the Bendit part, allows you to bend your object with the help of Slice It in relation to a curve. The curve can be edited to make the object bend the way you want, or if you just want some simple bends, you can find presets for that in the menu. Another interesting add-on I want to talk about is called Spark. On the surface, it may look like a simple add-on to organize or pack objects from a collection onto a face or more. It uses algorithms to pack objects next to each other to avoid overlapping. 
The add-on seems useful if you don't want to spend time organizing objects in a scene. I believe anyone who uses Kit Patch modeling will run into the problem of getting tired of just placing models or kit bashing them over time. And the add-on has a bunch of useful utilities, including the ability to replace materials globally. And the great thing, it works with KitOps for obvious reasons. Obviously because both add-ons are from the same developer. Another interesting add-on from the KitOps family is called KitOps Batch, which is a tool made to help KitOps Pro users automate their work in KitOps and make it easier. And I believe whether you just started using KitOps or you have been doing so for some time, these features in this add-on will help you organize your work. And to be more precise, the add-on will create thumbnails for blend files in the folder and convert OBJ files to blend KitOps inserts, export all collection objects in a scene into separate OBJ files, and convert PNG decals in a folder into inserts. The add-on actually has more features. But if I keep listing them, it will get really boring. As I said, the add-on is really good for anyone who's using his own models in addition to inserts with KitOps, which creates a nice ecosystem around the add-on of KitOps. Far away from KitOps, we have another interesting add-on called Chalk Style Pro. This add-on will allow you to create some clean ambient occlusion wireframe rendering in just a few minutes. Using the add-on, you can make chalk style renders of your mesh or the mesh of your models. You can edit and change parameters like the weights of both wireframe and outlines. And you can control the relative darkness of the ambient occlusion pass in addition to other stuff. The add-on uses nodes, which allows you to control the effects. And according to what I saw, the process is really easy and simple. A lot easier than the old method of making those renders at least. And there you have it guys. If you are interested in one of those add-ons, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a like. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.